Hello, welcome to this video. In this one, we're going to talk about Scott cylinder blocks. So from the early 20s, Scott's pretty much settled on the design of the cylinder block. I'm not going to talk about early ones because they change the design all the time. Uh, and there was all sorts of different variants of water domes and cylinders and everything. So I'm not going to discuss those. Um, I'm just going to talk about the ones that are most popular, which basically take us from the early mid 20s onwards. And, you know, all Scott's uh, that we're talking about, you know, flyers and squirrels and such like, they all followed the basic same construction, which is two cylinders in one casting that we've got here. Uh, we have the inlet ports around the centre here. We have the transfer ports on the back of the engine, and we have the exhaust ports on the front. And some of them also had the decompressor holes um, in the front of the, the block as well. And we have the water jacket around the cylinders. And then we had various different finishes for the top of it. Uh, this is the water pipe. So this is what would be known as, this is a 500cc, we can tell that by the wall thickness here. This is a 500cc short stroke blind head block. So this is what we would refer to as the generic blind head barrel. Uh, and this was fitted on pretty much all the bikes around through the 20s into the early 30s. So talk about blind head, why is that? It's because the cylinders, as we can see here, are blind. So the entire cylinder is encased up through the uh, through the cylinder bore there, and uh, there's no separate cylinder head as such. Um, it's an integral part of the casting. So this is a blind head Scott block, and we can identify these by usually on the front of the block at the top. There's a small angled area, and there's a number stamped on that. We would usually find, and the number on this particular one is five and forty nine sixty fourths. So it's generally five inch and then some kind of uh, uh, number after that. And that denotes the height from the bottom of the cylinder to the top. So short stroke blocks are usually shorter than long stroke blocks. So you must be careful. Um, there's a few long stroke engines around that people put short stroke blocks on. And what that does is give you incredible compression ratios and an incredibly short big end life. Um, if you want to look at all the different types and measurements of these blocks, now if you look on our website, uh, go to Scott Info, Technicalities, and I think it's section 2.3, it's called Engine Specis, and in that, on one of the pages there, is a list of most of the different block types, the stampings, and which models and such like they're related to. Um, obviously over time, blocks being interchangeable with crankcases from the, uh, the mid-twenties onwards, is that there's all sorts of mix and match there and even if you've got the original crankcase on your bike I'll be amazed if you've got the original block so be careful especially if you're buying one and you're not sure what you're buying check the crankcase number to see whether it's long stroke or short stroke and check this number on here to make sure that that is appropriate for the block sorry for the crankcase that you've got whether it's long or short stroke so if we run through these in roughly age order, I've got four here, uh, which cover the, um, a reasonable uh, amount of all of the Scots that were manufactured. This is an early block, early 20s, and the way we can identify this is by a couple of reasons. It's obviously a blind head block, so it takes the standard water down, goes on the top there. But the offset of the cylinders is slightly different to the later ones, um, so that the actual uh, the cylinder here versus that plug hole there's a different offset and there were a sixteenth different uh, between the early and the later ones which is why if you look on our website to buy a water dome you'll find there's a variant uh, for different offsets of those so be careful of that the early ones had a very flat top to the cylinder here um, it's an almost flat shape because actually they used what were called flat top pistons they didn't have um, a big radius on the edge of them so different pistons for the different barrel that we've got here these earlier ones also had centre exhaust exit and a panel uh, that screws over to block each of the exhaust ports where they'd been cast in. So centre exhaust exit, flat top barrel, 
that is an early blind head block as it would be called the bottom of the block cylinders and such like porting all that's pretty much the same uh, we've got the decompressor holes in the block here and uh, they take the normal decompressors the only difference is that um, on this one if you look at it in this orientation you can see that they're actually angled to each other uh, whereas the later ones were completely flat across the back they take the same spark plug ferrules and they take the same type of water dome just with a slightly different offset that's all that is an early squirrel and super squirrel block um, these weren't fitted to flyers because uh, when the flyer came out they'd already moved on from this design moving on from our single exhaust exit block the blind head block developed itself into this which is the most common type of blind head block that's available so we have a more rounded profile on the top of the cylinder here um, we have a uh, slightly different offset so a more central uh, between the plug holes and the outer and the cast uh, we have the height cast in on the small uh, machined ledge that we've got at the top front of the barrel there and we have a flat area at the back with two exhaust ports so this would use the twin pipe exhaust and we have the decompressors in here as well um, it's just everything is plainer so other than that they are the same as um, the later blocks we have the conventional mountings and spigots on the bottom here and now these are becoming quite sought after now because good blind head blocks are becoming quite rare so there we are that is your most common blind head cylinder block 500 and 600 cc long stroke and short stroke so there's at least four different variants and again you've got to make sure you know what you're buying if you're buying one moving on from the blind head block there was a company called Paramount and one of the reasons I'm doing this video is that I actually have a very very rare Paramount, Paramount engine block uh, in here for work at the moment um, I've just rebought and honed this one so this is what's called a Paramount 9 stud block and uh, these are extremely rare the reason they're extremely rare is that they weren't very good and they all got thrown away or broken so this was basically one of the predecessors of the Scott detachable head so moving on from the blind head type that we've already talked about this is a detachable head engine we can see that uh, we have quite a short stubby cylinder block here um, the bottom of the cylinder block is exactly the same as the blind head so completely interchangeable uh, we have the flat area across the back of it for the two sorry across the front for the two exhaust ports we have the two transfer port openings on the back here but on the top as we can see we have nine studs and the problem with these is the centre stud uh, it's cast onto a very very thin um, web in an X shape and usually this entire section gets broken off and if it hasn't been broken off it's usually damaged and you can see on this one it's actually cracked through that centre thread they are extremely delicate and that's why not many of them remain um, they weren't a success um, and uh, it's quite a change to have one one of the interesting features is that this is the paramount cylinder head and although it looks like it's aluminium it's not this is cast iron and it weighs a ton so the paramount head and block go together nine stud as I said that's how you identify this a nine stud head and um, it fits in the conventional way of the later ones over the top there um, special head gasket um, again it's a laminated uh, copper head gasket but uh, there's only one in existence as far as I know and I've got it here in the workshop and it's going on this engine here so if you need to take your paramount nine stud head apart uh, good luck in finding a gasket because I don't believe anybody makes those and I don't even know that anybody's got any in stock so cast iron head cast iron barrel nine stud mounting paramount uh, if you can find one it's extremely rare and uh, I would only use one as a last resort anyway because as I said they're not very good because they break the center stud out so that is the paramount and that was uh, made around the same time as the later blind head barrels and it's thought that the design of this actually prompted Scott to move on to their detachable head design so this is a Scott 
this is a detachable head barrel so this is a Scott factory one and uh, we can see that we have the conventional features we've talked about with the rest of the barrels in that we have the normal spigots uh, we've got the porting in the bottom here uh, the fit is exactly the same with the four mounting bolts on the back of the block we've got the two transfer port openings on the front of the block we have the two exhaust openings but the block is slightly taller than the paramount and we have an aluminium cast detachable head. Now the Scott one has 16 studs round and they were an awful lot stronger particularly in this centre area where the Paramount ones used to break. So this is what's called a Scott detachable head barrel and again they were available in 500, 600 long stroke and short stroke so you need to make sure again that you're, you know what you're buying if you are and that uh, it's suitable for the cranks and crank case that you've got. So these are by far the most common. There was a few different styles of cylinder head um, with different radiuses and um, 14 or 18 mil plug holes and some had quite a square profile, some like this one are very rounded here uh, but um, all of the 16 stud heads are interchangeable. There's um, no real problems with these, they were very robust as engines um, and cylinder blocks. The only problem you get with these is that uh, we have a laminated head gasket between the barrel and head and what happens is that over time the laminate gasket um, leaks and it leaks uh, the cooling fluid up through into the studs, the stud area between the studs and the cylinder head and what that does is that when we have an iron stud in an aluminium bore like this uh, is that the cylinder heads weld themselves onto the blocks in a way that um, I think is almost previously unheard of to man because if one of these heads is stuck on the block um, you're not getting that off they really do weld themselves on uh, and there's various methods of removing heads that have been stuck on and most of them are quite brutal they involve doing things like bandsawing through the head gasket and then remachining or spark eroding all the studs out of the block um, you can't drill the studs down from the top if you try doing that the drill will wander over that sort of distance and you'll end up with half studs and all sorts of mess so that's one thing to be careful of um, if you are buying a cylinder block and head uh, that's been together for a long time and the engine needs boring you are probably going to have to bore it by leaving the head in situ because um, it can be a real struggle to get those off and in some cases absolutely impossible so that is the detachable head block there's a couple of different variants uh, within the blocks as well that we can talk about and this is one here is that some of the blocks beside the transfer port openings uh, we have um, some small ports and these are for cylinder wall oiling and blind head and detachable were both some of them were fitted with this as an option and that was if the bike was fitted as a factory option with a cylinder wall oiling so lots of TT reps had it uh, sprint specials uh, and obviously Scott being Scott if the customer decided they want it on any bike and um, then Scott would do it and it's simply a threaded port um, there's usually a small thread or an elbow goes on here uh, and it leads through to a tiny hole in the cylinder wall and as it says it means you can provide cylinder wall oiling so those blocks are a little bit more rare um, slightly sought after for people that want originality on things like TT reps uh, so that's one thing to look out for um, the other thing to look for on Scott blocks is that particularly in the area at the rear of the block is that in the good old days where things like glycol wasn't very common uh, and bikes lived in sheds is that lots of Scots suffered frost damage particularly on um, blind head barrels uh, they were far more susceptible to it than the detachable heads and what you tend to find is that sorry I said earlier about the, um, uh, the stamping being on the front of the barrel it's not it's on the top at the rear um, what we tend to find is that above the transfer ports is that in this area here is that this area gets cracked um, because of frost damage now they can be repaired uh, it can be quite involved um, it's an awful lot of work but it can be done uh, and you can rescue it because you're welding or brazing in the area that's away from the cylinders it doesn't tend to distort the cylinders although a quick hone afterwards doesn't do any bad 
um, and they can be repaired so watch out because there are some around and the quality of repairs varies from excellent and almost invisible or completely invisible um, to oh my god I can't believe that somebody did that so if you are buying Scott Blindhead barrels have a look for frost damage um, you can look down inside the barrel to see it and you can also look on the outside you can see on this one here there is um, a mark there where clearly somebody has has welded that up underneath the paint at some point in its life. Usually ones that have been repaired are okay, they don't really cause problems because the water is not under pressure, uh, but just again keep an eye out for it and if you are leaving your scot over winter uh, either take the water out or run it with antifreeze that would be a really good idea. Right that's it, that's our quick introduction to four different types of scot block. Um, hope you've enjoyed it, found it informative. Have a look at our website at the technicalities section for more detailed information about port heights, overall block heights and the different engines that they fitted on. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks very much.